The most important and unregrettable time of my life was the 12 years I spent in the army. I became a bomb technician because I wanted to save lives. I nearly gave my own life for that I lost both my legs and a finger when a roadside bomb detonated beneath me and have known more heroes than I can count who died defending others. When I was with others on the battlefield and we saw a chance to save a life, we didn't have a meeting about it, we acted immediately. I never worried about becoming a casualty myself. Now, as a Republican congressman from Florida, I don't fear becoming a political casualty, either. If we act now by changing laws surrounding firearms and mental illness, we too can save lives. Most nights in Afghanistan, I wielded an M4 carbine and a .40 caliber pistol. The total barrel length of my M4 was approximately 14 inches with Trijicon ACOG sights, as well as an infrared laser. I usually carried 10 magazines stacked with 20 rounds of 5.56mm ammunition each. My rifle was very similar to the AR 15 style semi automatic weapon used to kill students, teachers, and a coach I knew at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, FLA, where I once lived. I have fired tens of thousands of rounds through that rifle, many in combat. We used it because it was the most lethal the best for killing our enemies. And I know that my community, our schools, and public gathering places are not made safer by any person having access to the best killing tool the army could put in my hands. I cannot support the primary weapon I used to defend our people being used to kill children I swore to defend. The truth is. Most gun owners are responsible sportsmen and collectors who enjoy shooting recreationally, like me, or want to protect their home in the way they see fit. I am a long-time member of the National Rifle Association. My grandfather bought me my first NRA membership when I was young, and I have the same pride he and many Americans feel at being responsible gun owners becoming excellent marksmen and joining in the camaraderie of hunting. We are Americans and we like to be the best, we should never lose this trait. The AR-15 is an excellent platform for recreational shooters to learn to be outstanding marksmen. Unfortunately, it is also an excellent platform for those who wish to kill the innocent. I conceal and carry a 9mm pistol most days because I know the threats and I don't want to die because I am unprepared to return fire. I also know that I am made less safe by the threat of tactical rifles. I am confident I can eliminate an active shooter who is attacking with a pistol because the attacker would have to be close to me. But the defense my concealed 9mm affords me is largely gone if the attacker is firing from beyond 40 yards as he could easily do with the AR-15. No firearm is evil. Guns are tools that fulfill the intent of their users, good or bad. But we've seen that the rifle of choice for many mass shooters is the AR-15. The Second Amendment is unimpeachable. It guarantees the right of citizens to defend themselves. I accept, however that it does not guarantee that every civilian can bear any and all arms. For example, the purchase of fully automatic firearms is largely banned already, and I cannot purchase an at 4 rocket, grenades, a Bradley fighting vehicle or an Abrams tank. I know that no single action can prevent a truly determined person from committing mass murder, and I am aware of other ways to commit mass murder such as bombings and mass vehicular slaughter. Not being able to control everything, however, should not prevent us from doing something. Therefore, I support the following defining what constitutes an assault or tactical firearm and not allowing them for future purchase just as we already prohibit the purchase of fully automatic firearms. The exact definition of assault weapon will need to be determined. 
but we should all be able to agree that the civilian version of the very deadly weapon that the army issued to me should certainly qualify. I would not support any version of a ban that results in confiscating existing legally owned firearms. Ensuring that every firearm purchaser has a background check. We also need to improve the background check system. Banning the sale of accessories and add ons that circumvent the ban on automatic firearms, and increasing the ages at which individuals can purchase various categories of firearms. Ensuring that those who have been detained for mental illness, or have been ordered by courts to receive treatment for mental illness, cannot purchase firearms. Ensuring that someone who is being looked at as a possible terrorist, through a system of due process, cannot purchase a firearm and that any person threatening to shoot or blow up a school, in word or on social media, is placed on an FBI watch list for a long time. Providing behavior detection training to anyone seeking a federal firearms license. Making substantial resources available to schools, at their discretion, for security measures, including the opportunity to purchase enhanced security screening. Install classroom panic buttons wired directly to law enforcement and hire additional school resource officers. Holding the FBI and state agencies accountable for their failures to identify a threat like Nicholas Cruz, as well as ensuring that schools enforce basic security protocols to prevent access by unauthorized personnel. And finally, conducting further research into the nexus of gun violence violence in mass media and mental illness. The President, House of Representatives, Senate, every state legislature, sheriffs, police officers, school boards, students and parents must unite with one mission, that no one will ever be murdered in school again.